Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again on a lovely spring day. It's midweek Wednesday. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we have a couple things to get to today. Hopefully it'll be a quick episode. It's just so nice out. I want to be outside doing some things around the house and uh, the weather's just beautiful this time of year. Spring is such a nice time. Unless you have allergies, then it can kind of wreak havoc on you. Um, last night was the poor man's flea market. It was beautiful temperature. I guess it was uh, upper 50s when I went walking last night. It was just so nice. The air was crisp. The stars were out. It was just a clear night, beautiful night for walking. And because it was a warm day, somewhat warm day yesterday, a lot of people were cleaning out their garages and whatnot. And it was a, it was quite a find last night. I was walking around <laughs> going to the flea market. So I filmed a couple things. And let me show you some of the interesting things that were on my poor man's flea market route last night. Okay, first off, right around the corner from me, you remember the gazelle that, that used to be on TV back in the 90s, I guess it was, had that guy Tony Little, the guy with the ponytail or whatever, and he used to go on this thing. <laughs> well, that was around the corner. It looked in great shape. Then there was this thing. It was a full-size keyboard, and boy, this one, I guarantee this worked. I, I know when stuff works, and this definitely worked. It even had the stand with it, but uh, yeah, that was right around the corner from me, too. And then right down the block from there, there was this beautiful table. It was inlay, glass inlay. With, look, at, look at the beautiful speckles and all kinds of inlay they had in there, and it was poured. But look, on the other side, somebody must have dropped something and broke. Remember that. Glass tops are tough. Uh, walking down the block later on, I look across the street, you know, and you say, hey, what is that? And, you know, sometimes I'll cross the street and sure enough, here is a, a couple lanterns. That top one had the glass intact, which is uh, always a nice, nice thing if you uh, wanted to restore or fix a lantern up, you know, you find something with glass intact. But a lot of those are cheap reproductions. That's why they stay there. These things, you know how many of these stoves, these toy stoves I find, but I always get a kick out of them. They always put the accessories in a bag on top of the stove. I think that's so cool. Um, later on, I f these two end tables, outstanding. They had super heavy-duty iron. They aren't hollow. These aren't, you know, like aftermarket Chinese junk. These things were expensive. They weighed about 40 pounds a piece, but they were missing the glass tops. I don't know if they were next to it or whatever, but... That was a nice find. Now, you see this building here? Look at this building. You see this here? This is right around the corner from my house. When I was a kid, that building, my buddy Charlie Goodacre lived. This is what that looked like. So in my neighborhood, they tear down these beautiful old homes, and they put up these monstrosities that are about nine families or more. Later on, uh, I saw this right around the corner. Look at this here. This is, uh, you see these? Now, again, this is definitely, I'm sure, another organ, but three fans. Now, what did I tell you? When you find fans thrown out, if you find fans thrown out in August, good chance they're broke if you find them any other time of year. And you know when you got three of them, guaranteed at least two of them work, if anything. But uh, these were old, and these were expensive at, at a certain time. I, I think they're Marvin fans. They were expensive fans at the time, and they were window fans, and they're heavy-duty but uh, my buddy Tom, the other scrapper, he gripped the cords away. <laughs> okay, you could see it was a it was a nice night last night. Had a good time, and uh, there's going to be a lot more uh, poor man's flea market stuff being thrown out because there's a lot of houses that are being, uh, you know, they they tear them down to put up those monstrosities. That's what they do in my neighborhood. So that's why those old houses have the good stuff that goes out. Um, Next up, um, as you know, I'm a big fan of lighting and lamps and light bulbs and things like that. Ever since I was a kid, it's a it's a you know passion of mine, and um, I have a, a old lamp that I have uh, that I, I wanted another one of, so I kept an eye out and I found a a similar part on eBay. So I wanted to get to that today. We got to do a little bit of work, a little bit of carving, things like that. I think it'll be pretty interesting. Let me show you what I mean. Now, of the lamps and lights that I like, you know, similar to those, 
Um, I like lamps that are unusual and also I like novelty lamps or animated lamps. I have a couple animated lamps and those are lamps that have some kind of movement in them. You know, they used to have the old waterfall lamps or fireplace lamps. I got a couple of those. I, I like that kind of stuff, you know, and back in the day, lamps and lighting was a big part of your home. You know, uh, you would have different around the house. It would, it would give you uh, focal points to look at and, and I have a cup of stained glass lamps. I have about four of those. I love those. And that really gives you such a warm feeling. But uh, amongst the novelty lamps, I have one of these. I bought it years ago. It's a uh, Howdy Doody lamp. And it, ca it came on a wooden base and had a switch on it and whatnot. And I always liked it. And then I happened to see this. Uh, at a, 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 and now these have gotten crazy expensive. For some reason... A lot of these old novelty lamps, people have memories of them when they were younger and they, it drives the price up. So, but I found this inexpensive, you know, uh, under $15 shipped or whatever. And uh, it's missing the base, obviously, in the, the bulb, whatever, but the bulb would go in there. This has a little crack here and it's missing a hand, okay? But this is the kind of projects that what we do, you know, if you can, if you've got a little bit of time and, and a little you want to have a little fun down you can take something like this and make it into a decent lamp so what i have to do here is first thing you, obviously it's a mess right look at it. it needs to be cleaned up you see the dirt around the belt area it looks like god only look at his boots now this is howdy duty howdy duty was a marionette puppet from uh back in the 50s it was a television show an early television show and it was wildly popular although most kids w couldn't pick him out today or who know what he is or what the uh, impact he made on television as a, as a youth. But um, Howdy Doody, I remember um, I, I did a video about four years ago uh, where I had a marionette puppet of Howdy Doody and I had to make a hand, all right? It's so funny that I come across these Howdy Doodies with a, one hand missing. Same thing, the marionette was missing a hand. I had to make a hand and I put it into a display case to give to a, a lady that lived uh, when I had my property upstate. She since moved to Florida, uh, Susan. And I gave that to her because she always wanted one as a kid. If That's a great video. I'll put a link in the description. It's a fun video uh, that I did. But anyway, um, now I have to make a, a hand for this, clean this up, and, and we'll figure out w what kind of base I'm going to put this on. But first thing first, let's, let's see if we making a hand for this might be a little difficult, right? Look at that. It's kind of a weird, and I won't make the same mistake I made last time. Spoiler, I don't want to say what it is, but so first thing, let's clean it up. Okay. So whenever you're going to clean something like this up, you know, especially if you don't know what kind of, you know, graphics or this here, you don't have to worry about coming off, but you don't know if this is paint or you don't want to fade it. It's got nice coloring on it. You always use an old soft toothbrush and soft soap and a good soap to use is like a goop. Or something like that because that's a very you know uh non-abrasive soap you wouldn't want to use the pink stuff on something like this because it's abrasive you don't want to have any abrasive on here because you want to keep all the nice colors on there okay so let's uh let's wash this up and i'll show you what it looks like when we're finished and here we go now i actually had to use uh i used comet cleaner made it into a slurry because there was a, some deep embedded dirt in there, but it really came out nice, didn't it? We got all the colors back. I went over it with a little Plastex afterwards just to give it a sheen again. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. You know, now you can see the hand. We got the, all the dirt out of the hands and all for the boots and whatnot. So now all we have to do is make a hand. Oh, geez, easier said than done, huh? Okay, let's see how we're going to do that. We just basically need to carve it out of a piece of, of wood, right? Or something, because it's it just has to look like something's there. Now, whenever you're going to do any kind of carving, the first thing you have to think about is what kind of wood do you have available? Now, the best kind of wood for carving is basswood, and that's because it has almost no grain to it, which means you could carve it any which way, and you won't have to worry about splintering, chipping, whatever. It has a very tight, uh, hardly noticeable grain to it. Uh, when I talk about grain, this here is a, a scrap of uh, two by four. And you can see how wide the grain is and how thick. And, you know, typically this would be 
uh, a little bit more difficult because the minute you push your knife into here, it's going to want to split all the way through because of the, the grain, the, the very apparent grain that's there. Here's another piece of pine. Pine isn't a great thing to carve, but it's what I have the most of. You can see the grain is much tighter here. You see that? When we talk about tight grain, and uh, this would make it much better for carving. Uh, it might be, it's a stronger wood. It's going to be a harder wood because it's, you know, so much more grain compact into there. But it also uh, will make it for where it won't uh, split out and run like this would. You know, this is kind of, and you can even see the weight of this. This is a much lighter than this. It's more dense. So we're going to cut, we're going to try and carve something out of there. We'll cut it out as much as we can with a saw and then we'll go through with a knife. I'll show you how we'll do that. So we'll get a piece and we'll start cutting away. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna just get a rough shape over here, cut a piece of wood that you have extra, you can hold on to, clamp it in the vise so that you can work. Don't try and start with a piece this big. You need a, lot, a larger piece, there's gonna be some waste. Cut it out, we have the approximate shape, the thumb is on this side. Now what we're gonna do, and if we need the wrist, remember there has to be a wrist that goes into this hole here. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, make the hand down lower and the top half of this wood will be the wrist. I'll show you what I mean there later. But so the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to cut, we're going to cut around here. Remember, we want to keep this piece here because we need something to hold on to. We can always cut that off later and, uh, and then cut around. So let's do that. By the way, a lot of times if you have like the crook between the thumb and the hair, you could drill that out. It's easier to just drill it with a hole than to try and get, you know, saw cuts in there. You'll have that nice roundness if you use a drill. So take a drill and use that to make that first. There's the hole. thumb hole and there's the where we want the wrist. So we're not going to touch anything within that circle of the wrist. First three cuts. One cut down here, relief cut, so you don't have the, this press, pressing on the saw curve. The second cut here, going along the line, and then a third cut just to create the, uh, the hand, okay? Now we'll cut that little nib off there with the top of the thumb, and then we're going to cut the thickness of the hand across here down. Now we made some more cuts. You see, there's the thumb, and even that a little large, because again, this is, you got to be careful you don't snap that off, but there's the hand, right? Here's the wrist. Now we're gonna, again, we're always we're leaving everything inside there. Now we're gonna put, do push cuts down. And uh, and again, we're leaving this part here so we can hold it in the vise and everything. And then when we get down where we make this round all the way down to the hand, we could start shaping the hand using a pocket knife. Okay, you see where I was going with that, right? We're trying to just remove a little bit of wood around here. And again, we kept it attached to there because it's just so much easier to work with. You can see what we're going with here, and we will trim it down. This is the bottom. It's got a little bit of a palm swell here. Uh, and then the thumb you have to be real careful with because, you know, when you have just a little piece of wood hanging off there, you know how easy that snaps off, right? So uh, now we'll do a little bit. we got to make this a little bit. This has to fit into here, but we'll, um, that's no problem. But what we'll do now is we'll... Uh, Take it to the band saw, uh, band sander, the one inch belt sander, rather, <laughs> band sander, the belt sander, and uh, we'll try and profile a little bit more. Okay, <laughs> here we're going. Thumb looks a little bit uh, extruded. We'll we'll take a little bit more off there. But now we're going to do uh, Dremel work. Cut some finger lines down there. We got the wrist. You see where we're going? That's all from one piece of wood. Probably could have made it easy if I would have just cut a, you know, this out and then glued a. But I don't know why I did out of one piece. Now let's cut some fingers, maybe hit some paint and see if it looks good from the three foot rule. Remember the three foot rule? Okay, so here we are. We're calling this project done. You can see the three foot rule. You see the hand. It don't really stick out. If you were just looking at it from a distance, you wouldn't really think about it. But there we go. Now we just got to make a base for this. I touched up the hair a little bit. It looks good. He's nice and clean. So uh, we'll have to make a base for that now. Okay, so in closing, just a quick message. Got that challenge. You only got a couple weeks left for the screwdriver challenge. Make your own screwdriver, homemade, all from scratch. The most, the most that you can do from scratch. Try and do the whole thing from scratch, but if you can't, you know you can't. But 
Uh, we already got a couple entries of guys that have put in. We got John Fix did one. We got Reggie on the road did one. They did videos and they, they came out great, of, of course. And uh, so, but we got some heavy hitters hanging out there. You know, we got 357 Magdad. You know, everybody's looking to see what he's going to put out. We got a bunch of other guys. So this is a fun challenge. Uh, it's uh, the cutoff is uh, May 1st, but I'll tell you when you could start mailing in the uh, the photos. will be about a week before. But uh, don't wait till last minute because sometimes it takes you, as you know, you start doing something, you run into some problems. It's it, it only should take you a day or two in the shop, but it's a lot of fun. Make your own screwdriver. I hope you get uh, try it out. We'll get a base for this uh, Howdy Doody coming up. I'll have a link in the description to that first video uh, to the other handless Howdy Doody. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thank you.